And the technical system of peak normalization is one of the reasons for that. So what did we do in television, or what do we still do? We, in a way, try to solve it through compressing the audio signal. So now we have still the same peak level, but we have the same loudness level now. So the loudness problem has you know, vanished, is going away. But we sacrificed all the dynamic range of the programs. So we compressed this wonderful feature film here that had such a nice dynamic range. We compressed it that it sounds like the commercial. And the action scene is very lame. You know, the action scene doesn't sound like an action scene anymore. The gunshots sound like champagne corks. Yeah? So we sacrifice all the nice dynamics of the audio signal just to solve the loudness problem here. And that's not the right way to do it, of course. Yeah? Compression is not the right way to solve the loudness problem. The loudness normalization is, of course, the solution. And you can guess now very easily what would happen. We, so to say, get rid of this common peak level. We introduce a new loudness level that is applicable to every single program. And now we align all these programs according to their average loudness level to the same one. Now everything is on average equally loud, but we do not sacrifice the dynamics. So this nice dynamic feature film is still a dynamic feature film. The peak levels are now all over the place, dependent on you know, how large the dynamic range is. But OK, that's how it is. But compression as a means to be louder than the competitor, that's going away. This concept is going away. And that, for me, is one of the most fundamental changes also, that now a compressor is again an artistic tool and not a tool to be louder than the competitor. And now you have to think about new ways, of new creative ways, to stand out from the competition. So a technical recommendation has a direct impact on the artistic side. And that's the real bonus, in my opinion. So why is it only now that we are approaching this subject or that we are about to solve it? Why not 10 years ago or 20 years ago? Yeah? The reason is that before 2006, there was no international agreed standard how to measure loudness. And that is not a trivial thing because loudness is a subjective impression. It's different for you, it's different for you, it's different depending on age and on gender and on whether you like what you hear or not, whether you drank a lot of Ferveta the last night or whatever, you know. So there's a lot of influences of your you know, subjective perception of loudness. And to find a measurement, an algorithm, that reflects our subjective impression most universally is not too easy. And therefore, it took such a long time. So in 2006, actually, the ITU released this recommendation 1770. The ITU is also in Geneva, the International Telecommunication Union. You're certainly aware of 1770. And this recommendation defines how to measure loudness so that it's coming you know, reasonably close to our subjective impression. And at the heart of 1770, you probably know that, is this filter curve, the weighting curve, which is called K weighting. Yeah. K doesn't have any special meaning. It's just one letter that was still free, so to speak. Yeah. It's a very simple high-pass filter with a shelving filter, and that stands at the heart of this algorithm. And then you sum all the channels. There is a certain uh, gain weighting for the surrounds, if you have a surround signal. But it's basically a very easy algorithm. So that's good news for the meter manufacturers, because it's very easy also to implement. That's at the heart of 1770. We have also new loudness units, so to speak, new measurement units. And one is a relative one, which is called LU, loudness units. It's not coincidence that it's very you know, close to VU, volume units. You probably know that. And I know that Gabriel will talk about that. Volume units. Here you have loudness units. We always have to have a relative measure, too, because we, are, we have to 
no, this program is 3 LU louder than this program. So we have to have a relative measure. But of course, we also have to have an absolute measure. Loudness units reference to digital full scale, LUFS. Very logical. So LUFS basically is the unit that we define in R128. You will see also LKFS in 1770, and I come to back to that a little bit later. But LUFS is what we advocate in R128. It's important to know that a step of one LU is the, step, is the same as the step of one dB. So if it's three LU louder, it's three dB louder, so to speak. Yeah? Very easy. LUFS is very nice also in the English language, loves. And we have spoken, of course, to Paul McCartney that they change you know, two of their famous tunes to all you need is loves and she loves you. Great. He is, he is, yeah, yeah, we can negotiate with him. So in the future, you will see something like that here. The loudness level with K weighting, that's the filter curve, <coughs> is, for instance, minus 18.7 LUFS. And as I heard from Gabriel, that's about the average level of Spanish television. Something like minus 19, minus 18, or whatever. Yeah? So that's how you were going to see it in the future. ITU 1770 not only defines the algorithm how to measure loudness, but it also recommends a method to measure peaks, abandoning the qppm, but actually measuring the true peaks of a signal, the real peaks of a signal, you know? Zero reaction time, and not even zero reaction time of the meter, but interpolating between samples, so that potential signals that overshoot are detected. And you do that with an oversampling true peak meter. So that's also an important aspect that R1 to, uh, that 1770 not only defines the loudness measurement algorithm, but it also defines how you should measure the true peaks of a signal. And although the peaks are not I as important anymore as they used to be, we still have to know the maximum true peak level because we have to guarantee that our signal chain is not distorted. That's clear. Now, 1770 is also, of course, at the basis of what we did in the EBU, in our PLOUD group. So we have now set up on 1770 a large, uh, large number of documents, I have to say. We have five documents that gives you, the broadcaster, the tools and the guidelines to switch from this traditional paradigm of peak normalization to loudness normalization. And of course, at the heart of what we have crafted is R128, which I'm going to introduce now to you briefly. What is R128? Basically, we define three audio parameters. One is program loudness. That's arguably the most important one. That's the average loudness of one whole program from start to stop. That can be a 15-second commercial. That can be a two-hour feature film. That can be a... 20 minute soap opera, whatever. From start to stop, there is one number that defines how loud is this program on average. The loudness can go up and down in the middle of the program due to artistic needs, but on average, it's one number. And this number is then gonna be used for the balancing to other programs. Yeah? So that's arguably the most important one. The next is the maximum true peak level. I just told you we still need that. And the third is a new one also. It's called loudness range. And loudness range now for the first time gives us a tool, a measurement tool, where we can really put the number to the difference between the loud and the soft parts of a program. Up to now, it was just you know experience. You thought, well, this feature film is maybe too dynamic. It doesn't fit into the living room. We have to compress it a little bit. Now we have a measure where we can take this measurement to decide whether we should do something to the audio or not. So that's also an important one. 